All right. Just a quick review of the Spanish pronunciation. Um, we're going to go over the pronunciation of each letter and then in the pronunciation of a word with each letter. First off, let's talk about the vowel sounds. Extremely important. In Spanish, five vowels, five sounds. English, five vowels, 14 sounds. All right? So, and you can think about the combinations of vowels that we have in English. Think of good food. They're the exact same combination, two O's, but they have different sounds. It's not going to be like that in Spanish. The pronunciation of our vowels is A, E, I, O, U. If you pay close attention to my mouth as I was pronouncing that, you will see that it gets smaller as I pronounce. Look again. A, E, I, O, U. Gets smaller each time. So we have A, E, I, O, U as our five vowel sounds. Let's go through and pronounce each one of the letters that you can see there on your screen. So we have A, B, C, Ch, D, E, F, G, H, I. Now let's erase, and I apologize if you hear beeping noises. This is the smart board that I'm using. So we're going to take a moment and erase our pronunciation. No, I'll tell you what, let's leave it up there. Let's leave it up there. All right, so let's get a word. Argentina, Argentina, Argentina. Of course, a Spanish speaking country in South America, Argentina. All right, let's move on. Bolivia. Bolivia. Again, another Spanish speaking in South America, Bolivia. Really important to note that both of these letters here, the B and the V, the B and V in Espanol, are pronounced exactly the same. Um, depending on where you are in the Spanish speaking world, this will be called your letter B, will be called B, B grande, whereas your letter V may be called V, or it may be called B chica, as meaning small b. So we'll write the same word for V, or for B, or for B chica. We'll use Bolivia and Bolivia because it contains both letters and they both sound the same. Se. Let's take a look at se. We need two pronunciations for se. We have Costa Rica, Central American Spanish speaking country. And you've not, you might notice that both of the pronunciations there are the same. Costa Rica, the hard K. Well, that's the case if it comes before ca, co, or cu. All right. Another example that we have would be cero, cero, the number zero, cero. All right. If it precedes se or si, it has the sound like our S. So Costa Rica, cero. Che. Chicano, Chicano, Mexican American. Anything Mexi Mexican American is Chicano. People that are of Mexican and American descent, Chicanos. All right. They. Let's look at they. The word we're going to use is Dominicano. Dominicano, Dominicano. To describe something from the Dominican Republic would be una persona dominicana. A Dominican person. <clears throat> let's look at the A. Let's look at A. We have Ecuador. Ecuador. Let's erase. Switch back to the pin. Ecuador. Let me go back really quickly. It's important that the first letters here pronounce are pronounced like the soft th in the word the so not dominicano 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 moving back to ecuador ecuador kind of like the e sound that we have in our word for eight the number eight 
or the egg, the small breakfast food that comes from the chicken. Egg. Ecuador. Ecuador. F. We're going to use the word fail. Fail. Now the what you what you see written beside the letter is not the exact spelling of the letter. It's the the way that I think will help you best be able to pronounce it. So la letra G. Let's take a look at la letra G. Here's another example of having two pronunciations. Guatemala, Guatemala. You can hear the soft g g sound. Guatemala. Uh, another example. Another example would be the verb to spin or to turn. Girar, girar. So gonna be the same principle. Ga, go, gu. And that's a u. Or he, he. Gagogu he he. Guatemala girar. H. H is completely silent. So it's not hospital, it's hospital. Absolutely no pronunciation of la H. H, no pronunciation, hospital. Let's look at E. What do we have for E? We have. Iglesia. Iglesia, the Spanish word for church. Iglesia. It's pronounced as we would pronounce our letter E. Iglesia, la letra E. J is another different pronunciation than we would think. It's pronounced like the hard H, the H sound. So that, that that you see there is not Jalisco, it's Jalisco. Jalisco. <coughs> Excuse me. Jalisco is a state in Mexico. It's the state where the city Guadalajara is located, which is extremely um, important. It's the birthplace of mariachi music and the place where the finest tequilas are currently manufactured. It's the home of tequila. All right. La letra K. We'll take a look at the country Kenya. Kenya. All right. The country Kenya. K. Always that pronunciation. L. L. Largo. The adjective for being long, largo, largo. Now this one gives um, people some trouble sometimes, but let's take a look at it. The doble, L, but we call it eje, eje, it is its own letter, eje, is always pronounced like a Y. So whenever you get to the point of where you're saying your name, me llamo Joshua. Me llamo Joshua. Depending on where you learn Spanish and where you're from, the pronunciation is either like a pure Y, like me llamo, or it could be me llamo. Okay? Just depends on where you're from. Either either one is correct. Alright? M. Let's take a look at M. Martes. The word for Tuesday. Martes. N. Another country. Nicaragua. Nicaragua, Nicaragua, same pronunciation. Now here it gets a little bit tricky. Let's look at the word años, the letter ñ, ñ. It is pronounced as if it is always written with a Y. Ñ, años, años. To ask how old someone is, you say cuántos años tienes. Literally it asks how many years do you have. If you don't include the squiggly line called the tilde on top of the N, and you say, ¿Cuántos años tienes? You're asking somebody how many anuses they have, and then the conversation gets really uncomfortable. So pronunciation is absolutely critical. O. La letra O. The word we're going to use is otoño for fall, autumn. Otoño. P. Let's take a look at P. Persona. Persona. Pretty easy kind of uh, pronunciation. Persona. Q. La letra Q. It's always pronounced like the hard K sound, okay? So this word you're going to see a lot. K. Not que, not qui, but K. K. Ere. Ere. We'll take a look at the word Peru. Peru. Ere. Ere. Peru. Moving along. S. La letra S. Alright. We're going to take a look at the word. 
Silla, which is the Spanish word for a chair. Silla, silla, hard S. Te, te, tonto, stupid, silly, somebody who plays around. Tonto, just a hard T. But you want to flick the tongue to the back of your teeth when you do this one. So it's going to be tonto, tonto. Ooh, take a look at ooh. We'll look at Cuba, Cuba. And that's it. We've already taken, look, taken a look at Be Chica, Bolivia, Bolivia, same sound as our letter B. W, W, literally two V's, two V's. W, we look at Botswana, Botswana, an African country. No relation here to Spanish speaking, but it's just one of the few examples we have with the W. X. Everybody knows Dos X, the beer. Everybody's seen the commercial with the most amazing man on the planet or most incredible um, man. Funny commercials. The letter X. X. And the word we have is our southern neighbor, Mexico. Mexico. You can hear the pronunciation is a lot like the letter J in that it's a hard H burst of air. Mexico. All right. Here we have Y. Well, we have two examples here. Let's look at one. Yema. Yema is the yolk of your egg. But then you just have this letter here, which is actually a word in Spanish. It's the letter and. It's the letter and. And it's just pronounced E. E. And that's it. Yema. E. Zeta. We'll take a look at this word. Not zorro, but zorra. Zorra. Zorra, here, begins with the letter zeta, zeta, which is our letter Z. And depending on where you're from in the Spanish-speaking world or from whom you learned your Spanish, you may pronounce this a bit differently. It might sound like a hard TH, like zorra, depending on where you're from. But we'll just focus on having it really a lot closer to the S sound in Spanish. So, I'm sorry, in English. So the letter is Zeta, the pronunciation, Zorra. Hope you guys have found this useful. Um, please, I'm ready to fill questions. Email, call me, um, bring your questions to the virtual office. That way we can hear and talk to each other. And I can show you activities and really do things like this in uh, live with you online. Remember that you have to be at one meeting per week of the virtual office just to make sure that we're all moving forward and we're progressing. I need you to email me and let me know when you will be able to meet in the virtual office. Um, maybe I'll have an idea about a good schedule based on everyone's times after the first week. That way we'll just meet regularly and it'll go smoothly. Hope you guys have a great weekend and see you soon.